Hi, today we've got something a little bit different for Teardown. This is a headlight unit from a Nissan Qashqai which I picked up on eBay and I thought it might be quite interesting to have a little look what's inside because this is a full LED unit. So you can see uh, we've got the dipped beam through this lens here. We've also got a full beam which is an array of LEDs on the left hand side. We've also got the DRLs which is this illuminated light pipe and then also the amber indicator is also integrated into this light pipe. So um, there might be a few interesting things in here. This is one of the few that actually has the LED drivers built in. I was looking at a few of the headlight modules from different cars and they tended to have the drivers external to the unit which is probably good in terms of maintenance but it does mean that if you're trying to pick something up on eBay um, they always separate those out and then sell them for 100 or 200 quid so uh, it was going to get quite expensive. So I thought we'd have a little look inside this. There might also be some motors. I know there's definitely one on the back to control the, headline, uh, the headlight dip. Um, so depending on how much load you've got in the car the aim of the headlight dips up and down so that you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. And this one may be fitted with the swivel for the dipped beam to help you when you're going around corners but I'm not quite sure. In terms of the rear of the headlight module, there's just a couple of connectors. This is the 8-pin multi-plug to drive the LEDs. There's a 3-pin connector here, which I think is for the motor that steers the headlight unit. And then there's another 3-pin connector on the bottom of this actual motor unit, which controls the headlight aim up and down. Other than that, everything else is just really uh, mounting points. There is the rating of the headlight here, so 12 volts, 15 watts for the dip beam, 16 watts for the full beam and 2.9 watts for the DRLs and probably also the indicator lights. But these are quite low wattages actually. Um, in a standard headlight unit the halogen lights are normally 55 watts for the dip beam. If you have HID lights they're normally 35 watts and this is coming in at less than half of that and the general efficiency of HIDs in comparison to the LEDs is not that dissimilar. So I guess they're able to harness the light from the LEDs a lot better in this unit than they are from HID lamps. So yeah I think this might be a little bit of a pain to get to pieces um, so I'll join you after I've got the front cover off. One eternity later. Right so we're finally in and these perma seal headlights are really difficult to get into. I think really you need to bake the whole thing and then carefully prise it apart but I'm not trying to save this one so uh, did a bit of damage I'm not too concerned. But here you can see this is the light pipe that goes all the way around for the indicator and the DRLs and it looks like there's an LED engine at the bottom here and then one at the top. So I think we can remove this white uh, part that holds the light pipe in place. And there we can see the actual LED modules. Let's have a closer look at those. Right, so here is the bottom DRL LED module. And you can see here it's only got three LEDs on it, one amber and two white LEDs. Three completely separate circuits, so one for each LED, and there is provision for a capacitor to reduce the ripple on these. But these are Luxian Z LEDs, which have extremely high flux density. They're very, very bright LEDs in a very small package. I think it's like 1.5 millimeters by 2 millimeters, uh, maybe even a little bit smaller than that. And that allows for extremely high flux density because you can pack loads and loads of these onto your PCB and get a hell of a lot of light out from a very small area. They do basically have direct heat sinking. The pad is onto the die and therefore your PCB is just the heat sink and obviously you can mount a heat sink to the back of the PCB if needed. Uh, but these give really great thermal performance um, because you can get the heat directly out from the LED die. Not really much else on this board. So here's the other LED unit that was at the other end of the light pipe. Interestingly this one is mounted on really quite a chunky heatsink. The whole assembly is quite heavy. Also the PCB is one of these copper PCBs which are also really quite expensive. Uh, you've probably seen them with aluminium backed PCBs for the old Luxian star type LEDs and that kind of thing. But basically I think because the LED density is quite tight here. So this is what I'm talking about. You can pack the LEDs really tightly. But in this case there's no place for any thermal bias to conduct the heat away from the LED. So they've obviously had to mount this on a piece of copper in order to get the thermal performance so that these LEDs don't overheat. But again there's nothing else on the board, it's just the LEDs, no capacitors have been fitted and then just the connector to the driver unit. 
Let's remove the next layer. So we've got a piece of plastic. This is just for the aesthetics. And then here it reveals the high beam module, the dip beam projector, and then we can see some of the LED drivers at the bottom. Right, so here's the actual headlight module. We've got the full beam on the left and the dip beam on the right. And the whole thing was mounted on a little ball joint in this hole at the bottom here. So that's essentially fixed in the headlight unit. And then this was mounted on the back of the unit and this is a linear actuator. So there's a motor in here that causes this little shaft to push in and out. So if you can imagine that the bottom half is essentially fixed, when this linear actuator pushes out, it changes the angle of the unit up and down to change the height of the beam. And then it turns out that this one is actually one of the ones that can steer the headlight beam. There's not actually a lot to show because all it is is a motor unit here. They've called it an actuator assembly. And all this does is steer this entire projector left and right depending on the angle of the steering wheel so that when you go around corners you can see a little bit clearer where you're going. So there's actually not a lot to it. It's quite well integrated. So it literally joins onto the bottom of the heat sink just here and allows that unit to turn left and right. Here's the full beam module and it's a very stereotypical reflector type LED unit. You'll often see this on tail lights on modern cars. The LED is actually hidden up at the top and so Generally speaking, there's no direct view of that LED, but it just uses this reflector arrangement to direct the LED down and then scatter it so that it's quite easily visible. So you can see basically the shape of the unit. This is just plastic on here and then it's been metallized and this coating is actually quite fragile. I think this is what is starting to fail on my headlights. Um, the metallized coating does start to degrade, especially with UV and um, I think that's what I'm starting to see on my own headlights. So I'm thinking of potentially fitting the projector unit into mine. But basically, I think there's just four LEDs in here. These are roughly being driven at about three and a half watts each. I can't quite work out the type. They look a little bit like Osram Dragon LEDs, but I can't quite tell. Uh, but there's no heat sinking on this, so just direct to the FR4 material. Copper on both sides and some thermal vias and then quite a big ground plane. Uh, probably quite reasonable to dissipate that much power. You could probably leave these on full time and not re reach extreme temperatures. So here's the dip beam module. You can see the LEDs just on very dimly at the back there. This is driving it at one milliamp and it looks to have three LEDs in series in that single die because the forward voltage at about one milliamp is almost eight volts. So We've got three in series, potentially some extra LED dies in parallel, but it's a very small LED unit, so possibly only those three LEDs. Now I mentioned that HID projector lamps normally have a 35 watt HID lamp, and I was surprised that this one is only 15 watts, but it looks like they're using the light very effectively. So in a HID projector, there's a HID lamp, a parabolic reflector, and then there's a little piece of metal which blocks half of the beam to give you that beam shape. And then actually, typically if you want full beam, there's normally a little flap that flaps down and then that gives you the full light output. So I think probably in HID lamps you're wasting half of the power most of the time um, because of that cut off beam. On this unit, the actual beam is shaped by this little bit of plastic. So there's a bit of reflector material here and you can see there's just a little kink just where my pointer is there and that is what actually gives the beam its shape. So they're not wasting any power cutting it off, it's just that the reflector design is such that all of that light is making it out of the unit. So basically the LED is being reflected up to the top here, there's a reflector all the way around the unit and then that gives us the light through the lens. So really quite a neat assembly. It'd be quite interesting to see if I can actually fit this into my headlight unit to replace the HID lamps that I've got in mine. But there's not really much to it. It's got quite a reasonable heat sink. It only has to dissipate 15 watts. There's obviously um, AC LED retrofits that you can buy that are that power and don't have anywhere near this kind of heat sinking. So this is obviously designed for quite long life. Here's the LED driver for the dipped and the full beam. So basically we've got two completely identical drivers one on each side of the board 
And this, although it's got no recognizable part number on it, looks very similar to a Texas Instrument multi-mode LED driver specifically for automotive applications. The pinout and everything seems to match. And that driver can be configured for book, boost, book, boost, cook, uh, and all different types of LED driver technologies. From the layout that they've got, it looks like this has been configured as a book boost LED driver. So this is quite a generic driver, it just says 12 volts and that's it. I would assume that they use this driver on quite a wide range of LED headlight units. So by choosing a book boost LED driver, the battery voltage can be wide ranging and also the LED forward voltage can be quite wide ranging and the two voltages can overlap happily and will always be able to drive the LEDs at full power. Here's the LED driver for the DRLs and the indicator LEDs. Now these share the same heat pipes, so the general way that these work is when you're driving the DRLs are on at full power. If the headlight switch is either set to side lights or dipped beam or full beam, then the DRLs in the UK have to be significantly reduced in brightness because they're quite dazzling at night time. So, uh, there's a pin, in fact you can see on the left hand side here we've got identical driver to the headlight drivers. The only difference here is that we've got a different current sense resistor to reduce the current into it because those DRLs are only running at about 3.5 watts. Um, and then we've got a PWM input on this TI chip and that is what's reducing the brightness of the DRLs when you've got the switch in that position. So we have what appears to be a PWM generator in the middle here which controls that brightness. Now when the indicators are flashing, the DRLs get shut off so that you can clearly see the indicator. That is using that same PWM pin, but whenever the indicator circuitry is turned on, it sets the PWM value to zero to make sure that those LEDs are turned off. Now the driver for the indicators is actually a linear driver, so we've got three transistors which are dissipating the power, and there are three channels of amber LEDs in that unit. So that explains why we've got the three drivers here. But this is completely linear and I guess that's because the amount of time that the LEDs are actually flashing for is relatively low so they don't care about the heat dissipation too much. You can actually see the current sense resistors here for each transistor and I've done a video a long time ago on linear constant current drivers up here and it looks like they're using something very similar. There's a driver chip at the bottom which is managing those linear regulators, but there's actually actually no smarts on the board, no microcontroller or anything like that. This is all done plainly through logic. Here's the swivel motor for the headlight unit. I've just taken the top of it and it appears to be basically just a servo motor. So we've got power, ground and then PWM and the PWM sets the position and then there's a motor underneath here and then just the gearing down to finally the actuator that actually turns the headlight around. So there we go, it's a little look inside a LED headlight unit, something a little bit different, but I was quite intrigued to see sort of what LEDs they're using and how they're doing the heat sinking. You often see the retrofits that you can buy on eBay and they're really quite poor in comparison. These have really good thermal design because you really don't want these units failing. Some of these are in excess of two or three thousand pounds for the more exotic cars where um, you know there's even more technology in providing beam shaping and that kind of thing. So for effectively a light blowing you have to scrap the whole unit and replace it. So the whole thing has to be designed very well. As you know we can design LED drivers that are absolutely tiny and would drive the LEDs but what we want is high reliability so they've used some high quality parts on here um, obviously got protection and that kind of thing that will make sure that these driver units last a decent amount of time. It's slightly surprising to see electrolytic capacitors in here but you can get electrolytics that are designed to last 10,000 hours at their specified ripple current. We probably won't even see that ripple current on these capacitors here so hopefully this kind of thing should last the life of a vehicle. So there we go, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you've got any questions, don't forget to add them as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.